Well, let's just run through. You do Homer, right, of course. Yes. You do Krusty. Krusty, oh, yes, Krusty the Clown. Uh, uh, hey, there's my Krusty <laughs> buddies out there. You do Grandpa. Yes, in my day, we didn't have talk shows. We sat around and listened to noises. <laughs> Back. I gotta say, uh, one of my favorite characters was, was always uh, Barney. Love oh, Barney. Oh, yeah, Barney! <laughs> hey, what is this? Non alcoholic liquid. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, uh, people don't, you're groundskeeper Willie, which a lot of people groundskeeper don't. Groundskeeper Willie? <laughs> you all clean up after yourselves. I'm not cleaning up, you crap. <laughs> Homer's emotions change so quickly, and it was hard to go you know, all over the place, and so it sort of found a place in the, in the throat down here to go, oh my God, no, no, I lost, I lost my money. Ooh, donuts. Oh, I feel <laughs> Groundskeeper Willie, you just here did his job, and I hate it. Skinner and all that kids. They messed up as perfect school. Uh, Mayor Quimby uh, was basically, uh, it was written there, a Kennedy-esque uh, politician. So I just uh, went back to Vaughn Meader, who used to do the, uh, it was a record I had, the first family. So I just, that's where he came from. Simple as that. Homer has a little bit of, a little Mr. Magoo in him. And, um, there's a little Mr. Magoo, you know, just a little bit. And then Wally used to talk like this and go, oh, gee, Uncle, I, uh, what's, uh, what are we going to do today? So Barney was a little bit like that, but his voice was a little higher, went a little bit up like that. But that's where I, I, he came from. And I, I ran through different drunk voices and came up with that. Uh, but I just thought of uh, the most frail. Because Grandpa's like a feisty old man, but, but Hans Moment's kind of a frail old man because he can't see very well. And there was a guy named Gil who was a very desperate, sweaty guy, so I just based him on the uh, Shelly the Machine character that Jack Lemmon played. Yeah, Marge, you, you, you got any leads? I need leads. The, the wolf is in old Gil's door. You know, where he's, he's trying to be happy, but you know he's desperate behind it. Welcome back to the program. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you for uh, breaking in our extra tall microphone and our new set. Very nice, Dave. Thank you. By the way, it's not Phil Hartman anymore. It's not Phil Hartman. Nah, it's, it, name strikes me as kind of bland. I think I'm going to change it to my Simpsons name, Troy McClure. Troy McClure. You may know me from such motion pictures as Hitler doesn't live here anymore. Ah. And sorry, wrong closet. <laughs> I also did some educational films. Lead paint, delicious but deadly. Yeah, I think I saw that. Did you see <laughs> Locker Room Towel Fight, The Blinding of Larry Driscoll? <laughs> <laughs> Call that thing off. Yeah. I'm sorry, Mr. Burns, but my paper's not for sale. Who will... Maybe a little gift will change your mind. <laughs> Send in Sugar Bell. Which is a beautiful white pony. Oh, she's very pretty. But the answer is still no. Hmm. Honeysuckle, do drop. <laughs> Two even more beautiful ponies enter the room. Lisa's mouth drops open as the ponies do a sweet little pony dance for her. Close up on Sugar Bell, she looks at Lisa and bats her eyes. Oh, they're so beautiful. And their breath smells like peppermint. No, no, I won't take your blood ponies. Go on, sweetie, shoo, shoo. The ponies bare their teeth, which are sharp and pointed, hiss and run out. <laughs> Very well, you had your chance. I'm going to crush you like a debutante's cochage. Now, get out! 
I can't. My mom's not picking me up for an hour. <laughs> Everyone always talks about the fact that you do uh, the voice of uh, March Simpson mm -hmm. in the I Simpsons. I also do her sisters, yeah. whom I love dearly. <laughs> I love those two curmudgeons. Now, how often when you go to a party or go out shopping or out in public do people come and say, oh, do March Simpson, do the sisters? Well, usually they're about five years old. So for them, I don't mind. <laughs> it's the adults I worry about. No. Um, no, you can't turn down a kid, but you can turn down an elderly person. <laughs> like yourself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> On the show, we have to actually talk to ourselves. Rod, Todd, this is God. What are you doing on our radio? I invented the universe, stupid kid. I've got a job for thee. Bring forth all the cookies. But those are our parents' cookies. Do you want a happy God or a vengeful God? Happy God, happy God. <laughs> your attention, please, your attention, please. I have an announcement to make. I'm bored. Ha ha, you think you're bored? What about all those poor suckers out there in the audience? Ah, yeah, they just keep praying that their category is next. Well, as long as they are praying and while we're at it, I get to anoint their feet. You keep your hands off me, you little twink, or I'll call the cops. My daddy's a cop. His breath smells like cat food. Uh, excuse me. Hello. Welcome to the Quickie Mart. Sir, we can pay you back for the donuts when we find our car. Do you think I am moved by your sub story? I come from a country where the words for sewage and beverage are the same. A lot of Simpsons fans out there, they probably all have competing favorite Sideshow Bob lines. Do you have a favorite? My favorite Sideshow Bob line is... Well, Lisa, you don't spend ten years as a homicidal maniac without learning a thing or two about dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always sort of a weird version of young Al Pacino made gravelly. If this gets out, the next words you say will be muffled by your own butt. Police Chief Wiggum is an imitation of Edward G. Robinson, who's an old, old gangster actor from the 1940s. Wiggum. Yeah, right, mister. Mm-hmm. An elephant just knocked over your mailbox. Okay. And it's actually my impression of Mel Blanc's impression of Edward G. Robinson. Mel Blanc, for you kids playing at home, was the original voice of Bugs Bunny and other Warner Brothers cartoon characters. Snake is just kind of Jeff Spicoli from Fast Times and also a kid I went to college with who was always stoned. <laughs> okay. Kung Guy is another friend of mine from college, lived next door freshman year. Oh, loneliness and cheeseburgers are a dangerous mix. He had a barca lounger in his room. He would sit in it and he would have a list on his little uh, dry erase board outside his door. If he liked you, you were on his good list. If he did not like you that week, you were on his bad list. Dr. Nick is a uh, pretty bad impression of Ricky Ricardo. Hi, everybody! Hi, Hi Dr. Dr. Nick. Nick! So, yeah, I just thought it would be funny to talk like this. <laughs>